According to our teacher, Saint Matthew, the evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple, may his blessing be with us all. Amen. From the Psalms of our teacher, David, the prophet and king, May his holy blessings be with us. Amen. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. So sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord, our God, and our Savior, and the King of us all. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, glory be to you forever. Amen. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons, except by bells above the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or oh, how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruits good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit, brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it. 
in the day of judgment, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Glory be to God for In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us or asking us to decide where we stand, whether we are a good tree or a bad tree. And he's encouraging us to tell us to be a good tree and bear good fruit. But at the end of the day, as he said, a tree is known by its fruit. So we cannot say we are good trees, but we bear bad fruit. It doesn't work like that. And this is important for us to understand that what's inside the heart will be revealed out. And sometimes we think our words are different from our hearts, what's inside. And sometimes we don't make the connection and we think our intentions is one thing and our words is another and our thoughts is different and we think we can portray to be something or someone different from what's actually really inside the heart. So today is a call for us to be honest with ourselves and to really understand which one do we belong to, a bad tree or a good tree. It may be confronting, it may be hard to accept because a lot of people, they can be very good in using words to try and portray a different person from who they are truly are from the inside. And some people may be deceived by that. And some may, people may like to hear nice words, but the intention and the, the heart, what is the heart full of inside? The, gospel, the, the Pauline of today tells us something very important. St. Paul, St. Paul said this. St. Paul, he says, the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. And each one's praise will come from God. The Lord will come and will bring light to the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. That means come, God will come and reveal what's inside our hearts. It's not the about anymore about what the intention is. It's not about whether I'm a good actor, I can, I can use some nice words or can portray a different picture. God is looking at the heart today. God is focusing on our heart today. And this is our opportunity to focus on our heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And this is the link that our Lord Jesus Christ is trying to make today. He's trying to say whatever is in your heart is going to come out. And whatever you actually, deep, deep inside the heart, is going to be portrayed in the way you talk, in your words. People will say this is a slip of the tongue. You know, the words don't really matter. Words are just words. They don't really matter. And when someone, you know, offends someone, they say, that was just a slip of the tongue. I didn't mean that. But the actual truth is, instead of saying, I don't mean that, what they're actually saying is, I didn't mean to say that now, but it is in my heart. 
But I did not expect, I did not mean, I did not want to say that now. I didn't, I didn't want these words that's inside me to come out of my tongue, but they did. What does it reveal? It's actually deep inside the heart. And that's why when we say, I don't know how I said that, it's not me. Where did it come from? That came from the heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If there's goodness inside the heart, the mouth will speak goodness. If there's evil inside the heart, evil will come out. And this is very important, that we can't say, that's not me. I don't know where these words came from. But this is acts as alarm bells for us, that we need to monitor our words because our words are a reflection of our hearts. Our words are a reflection of our hearts. And if I monitor my words, I can see. It's like getting an imaging to examine the heart. People can't see the heart from the outside. When we have a medical condition, the doctor cannot see what's inside. They need to do an imaging to go inside and scan inside to find out exactly what is wrong with the human body. This is what we need to do. God is telling us today that our words is like a scan. We reveal what's inside our hearts. And that's why we need to take our words very seriously. They're not just words. Words are more powerful than many, many things. Words can hurt more than weapons. If you hurt someone with a weapon, that wound will eventually heal one day, the physical wound. But the wounds that comes from words, that can last for a long, long time, if never, may not even be forgotten. I heard uh, someone was trying to explain that, and this is, this is what they're trying to say. They say when you hurt someone, when they say hurtful words to someone, it's like you're coming and nailing nails in a wooden fence. So you hammer nails in the wooden fence. This, this is like hurtful words, when you say hurtful words to someone. But then if you apologize and say, sorry, I didn't mean that, what you are taking is as if you are taking the nails out of the fence. So you're taking the nails out, you're saying sorry for these hurtful words, but what do you end up with? You'll end up with holes in the wooden fence. There'll be holes from the nails. You may apologize and say, I'll take these words back. But I can tell you, the wounds are there. The holes are there, still there, from these hurtful words. And that's why we have to be careful, very careful from our words. St. James said it beautifully in his epistle in chapter 3. He talks about the tongue. And I encourage everyone today to read the chapter 3 of the epistle of St. James. talks about the tongue. And I'll read you some of the verses that when he talks about the tongue. He says... No man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. This is how he describes the tongue and the effect of our works. And he said in another verse, in the same chapter, for we all stumble in many things. If you want to be perfect, you need to control your tongue. This is what he said. He says, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. If you don't stumble in words, you are a perfect man. And God is calling us to perfection. So one of the steps or the things we need to do to attain perfection and to go in the way of holiness, as, as we commanded, is to control my tongue. And to be very careful about every word I say. Because the Bible tells us, which is very, very serious, he, it says, for God, God is telling us, for I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. He didn't say not even every bad word. He said idle word. That means the word does not even benefit. Even idle words, for every idle word, for every single word will give an account of it in the day of judgment. And that's why when people say, but my intention is different. I have good intentions but I said it in the wrong way. Well, the words count. We have to exercise care when we speak. We need to be, we need to stop before we speak and assess what we're gonna say, whether these words will hurt or not. If this is not our intention, then don't say it. Reflect your intention in your words. Because the Bible said here, 
The Bible says, it's not by your intention you're going to be condemned. It's not by your any action you're going to be condemned. Only, he says he, for by your words you will be justified and by your words you'll be condemned. By your words you'll be condemned. So words by themselves can condemn us. That's very serious. And this is the importance and that's why many of the fathers practiced silence. And they took the virtue of silence as something so important because they know this is the way to perfection. As St. James said, he says, if anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. And what happens when I control my tongue, when I control my words, he says, he's able also to, to control or bridle the whole body. So by controlling your tongue, you'll actually be able to control your whole body. That's how important controlling our words are. You know, we say many words to each other, hurting each other, sometimes with even realizing. Many people may be hurt for years, and the offender may not even know they've offended someone or hurt someone. Many people, people may leave the church and may even leave God and Christianity altogether because of a word that someone told them, especially someone at the church. This is the impact of words. The words can transform people. You know, there is a, um, a story of one of the great inventors, I think, was um, um, Thomas Edison, the one he invented the light bulb. He basically, when he was at school, one day his mother received a letter from the school saying, you know, uh, we, need to, you know we need to basically take him out of school. There's no hope in him. He's not well, doing well at school. And he need to take, we don't want him anymore in the school because his son is basically dumb. He's not good. This is what the letter that went to the parent. And he himself, as a young child, delivered that letter to his mother. His mother, when she saw the letter, obviously she was very upset. But she didn't want to tell that to her son because that will damage him. So she told him that because you are so clever that they actually... This school is not good for you. We're going to take you to another school, a better school. So she took him to another school. She never told him about this letter, and she hid that letter away from him. And he became great, and he became the great inventor of the light bulb. And, and when they were interviewing him, his mother passed away. And when they interviewed him about his success, he said that after his mother passed away, when he was going through her papers, he saw that letter that came from the school. And he said, one of the reasons I became great is because of the encouraging words of my mother. Imagine if that mother told him the bad things. You know, if we tell our children that you're helpless, there's no hope in you. If we say to someone you're a failure, they'll become a failure. Our words are so effective and we need to control them because we need to encourage each other. As the Bible tells us, that we need to say every word that encourages to build each other up, to edify each other, to encourage each other. People need words of encouragement. People need words of praise. People need words to comfort each other. And this is a good opportunity that God has given us two weeks to sit down with ourselves and have some quiet time with Him and really examine our hearts from inside and really ask God to help us to control our tongue and help us to understand the effect of our words. Help us to change our words, to change the things, not just about the intention, but to make sure we express ourselves clearly. We express ourselves to edify and to build the people that we're talking to. As we want to practice this beautiful verse from the psalm that King David used to say. He say, let the words of my mouth be acceptable before you, O Lord. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable before you, O Lord. We need to keep repeating this. So God make these words acceptable before him. And we edify each other. So I encourage you, take this opportunity. God may have allowed this time of two weeks so we can sit down ourselves and, and re-examine our hearts and re-examine, am I a good tree? I am a good tree because I'm consecrated. I've been, I've been marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit as a daughter and a, and a son of God, then I need to act like a prince, like a princess, because I'm the son and the daughter of the king of kings. 
So I am a good tree. God has equipped me with everything to become a good tree. I need to show that the fruit of a good tree, they have to be good fruit through my words. Glory be to God forever. Bless us.